Hello and welcome to a new video about standard elements. This time we're talking about a similar standard element to the last element. Uh, this time, yeah, it is also one unique element. Yeah, and like like the last element, like this this dead time element, everything can pass. Yeah? I show you now one example. Of, of application where we cannot cover this up to now with our standard elements. Yeah? Let's say we have the following situation. We have somewhere a hydropower plant. Yeah? So there is a dam somewhere, somewhere on the mountain. Yeah? Then there is the tube, the penstock, yeah? pressure line. There is the intake. Usually there is somewhere an intake valve where we can close the penstock. Yeah? Probably not with a hand, but I'll show you. Yeah? So here is the here's the reservoir. Yeah? Here is the, our water. It's filled with water, more or less, depending how much rain we've got and so on. Okay. So this is this is uh, the dam here. And somewhere down here, we have the turbine. There's the spiral case. There's usually also a valve which we can cut off. And in between, there is the pressure line. Sometimes here we have the we have a special building. I will not draw this now. This was a Schloss. Search tank in English. So this is the turbine, there's the turbine shaft, here we have the generator with its poles. And here we have the search line. And here we end up somewhere, usually, of course it a little bit further yeah so usually the turbine is covered by this yeah? if it's a Francis turbine or something like this here we have the water level which is downstream yeah so I also have a valve so the water is rushing through here yeah? through the turbine yeah? going down here good if we are connected to the grid yeah this generator here delivers electrical power. Yeah? Electrical power is delivered to the network. Yeah? And we want to control this electrical power. This is our task. Yeah? So here's, here's the penstock line and this penstock line. What we have to do? What we have to do to increase the power? Let's say we want to increase it. Yeah? Actually, we have two two issues. Yeah? So actually, we do have here at the turbine, we have here an intake pressure. We have here a pressure on the output side, and we have a delta p. Yeah? And of course, the electric, the power, the mechanical power on the turbine is the pressure difference multiplied by the flow through the turbine. Okay. So this is the mechanical, or this is the hydraulic power, then there is the, the efficiency of the turbine, then there's the efficiency of the generator, and this will be the electrical power. So either we can change the input power, or the, actually we could change the, the difference between the two pressures, P in and P out. If this pressure difference is higher, then the electrical power at the same flow will also be higher. However, usually this is not an option because this input pressure here is usually given by the height, filling height here, yeah, minus friction losses here. So here in the in the penstock I have some friction losses, yeah, and also the output pressure is pretty much given by the level of the downstream. So the pressure difference is somehow fixed. Yeah. Does not really change too much. 
So what to do? Yeah? We can simply open the turbine a little bit more yeah? and let more water run through. So if you have the same pressure difference, yeah? but more water running through, yeah? then I have more electric power. Hmm? Simple, right? However, what is happening? We must imagine here inside this penstock, this pressure line here, there is a lot of water. Yeah? It's not like this is a little tube. Yeah? It's a uh, boom, yeah? usually yeah? big. There is quite some, some tons of water, and these some tons of water do have inertia. Okay. And I can, if I open here simply the valve yeah, and let more water run through, to let more water run through, yeah, this needs a little time to accelerate this whole water column here. We need to accelerate this. Yeah. However, if we open here, we already are easing the path through the turbine yeah, because there is simply less flow restriction. Yeah. So, actually, what will happen yeah, is that this input pressure, because the water is running away yeah, more easily than before, the input pressure is dropping. Yeah. Simply dropping. Actually, this drop of the input pressure is exactly the thing which is starting to accelerate the water. Yeah. The water sees now, oh, there is less pressure, so I need to go to the less pressure, and, uh, and it's accelerating. Yeah? However, it takes a while to accelerate. And if it's then accelerating, then the input pressure will grow again almost to its previous extent. I say almost. Why almost? Because if there is more water running through, I have more losses between here and here. Yeah? So the pressure difference between here and here will be a little bit higher, so this input pressure will be a little bit below the previous version. Yeah? However, almost there. Yeah? So actually, how this electric power looks like, yeah? let's say this here is the level of our electrical power, there's the time, previously. Yeah? And that at some point in time, puck, we are changing something. So the electric power will stay constant. Yeah? And at this point in time where I'm opening this, the input pressure will be dropping. So the delta P is not that high anymore. Yeah? The flow almost stays the same. Yeah? So the electrical power will first go down. And only after the water column is accelerating here, it will go up and reach somewhere a new level. So the first reaction is exactly in the opposite direction as we would expect it. This we cannot handle with our elements we've got so far. Whenever such things are happening, if I'm doing something and exactly the opposite is happening of what should happen, yeah, then there is involved a so-called all-pass. Yeah? So it's an all-pass element. There is no short PT whatever number for this, it's simply all-pass element. And the transfer function of an all-pass element simply, uh, simply looks like, like this. Yeah? So there's a GS equals, and now there's 1 minus ST divided by 1 plus ST. Okay? This is the transfer function of an all-pass element. So if we are looking into the transfer function, in the frequency response, we simply have to replace S with J omega. So it looks like 1 minus J omega t, 1 plus J omega t. Okay. This is, this is the frequency response. Now let's think about 
what is the total value of this? Yeah. It is that the, the absolute value of this divided by the absolute value of this. And since this, since this two t's, this is the same t. Yeah, this is not t1, t2, this is the same t. Since these two t's are the same, the absolute value of this and the absolute value of this is the same. So actually, this is 1, always. Because if we calculate the absolute value of this and we calculate the absolute value of this, we will end up in the same square root of 1 plus omega t squared. Yeah, so it's 1. Yeah. And what is happening with the argument? Actually, that's the argument of here, yeah, minus the argument of here. Yeah. So the argument of here is minus Arcus tangens, this one, yeah, from omega t, yeah. actually it's the arcus tangens from minus omega t, however this is the same, yeah. and then we have minus arcus tangens from omega t, yeah. so actually there are two times, so it's, it's minus two arcus tangens from omega t. Okay. So let's look if we have if we're going to the extremes, omega equals zero, omega equals infinity, and we have the absolute value of j omega, and we have the argument of j omega. Yeah. What will happen? Well, this is easy. Yeah, the absolute value from j0 is 1 and the absolute value from j unlimited is also 1. Yeah. Let's have a look at the argument. The argument j0 is, if this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, so it's 0 degree. Yeah. And the argument unlimited. If this is unlimited, this is minus 90. Yeah? If this is unlimited, this is 90, minus 90, minus 90 is minus 180. Okay? So this is how this looks like, this all pass element. Okay? Whew. I would suggest to have a look at the Bode plot again and at the, at the, here it is, yeah, at the jump response. Yeah. So let's transfer this. So all pass element. G from S equals 1 minus ST, 1 plus ST. Yeah? So this G from J omega equals 1 minus J omega T, 1 plus J omega T. And we said the absolute value is always 1. And the argument is minus two arcus tangents from omega t. Okay. Let's have a look at the Bode plot first. Yeah? Bode plot for the absolute value is rather easy. It's one. Back. Yeah. Here, at low values, we are at around zero. Yeah. At high values, we are at minus 180. Yeah. And let's see if there is a certain frequency, yeah, 
image omega equals 1 divided by t. Yeah. If this is the case, then it's arcos tangens for 1, it's minus 45, 2 times, so arcos tangens for 1 is 45, minus 2, minus 90. Yeah. So I will say now here is 1 divided by t. Yeah. And here we have minus 90 degree. So it looks a little bit like a PT1 element. However, this element here is not changing from 0 to 100, uh, from 0 to 90. It is changing from 0 to minus 180. Yeah? But actually, it's looking pretty much the same. Okay? And here we will reach 180, but never exceed it. Yeah? And here, at 1 divided by t, we are exactly at minus 90 degree. That's it. Yeah? Let's see how the step responds. Well, if there is nothing going in, there is nothing coming out. And here we said we have high, 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 high frequencies. Yeah? If we have high frequencies at the jump position, we have, well, the output from the, from the absolute value, it is the same. However, it's minus 180 degree. And 1 minus 180 degree is minus 1. So we are going to jump to minus 1. Here we are at minus 1. Okay. So we're going exactly in the other direction, simply because we are here at minus 90. Okay? Book. Yeah? And here, this looks also almost like a PT1 element. Here we had this, this omega equals 1 divided by t. So t is 10. Yeah? And here we have then t. And after five T's, we are there. So it will look like this. So this now looks a little bit like a PT1 reaction. This is how it is looking. Minus one, because we have minus 180. And then going to the new value. Very similar to this reaction, right? So if you see this direction, there is somewhere this is a little bit smoother and so on, yeah, because it's real and this is not real, yeah. So this is a little bit more harsh, let's call it, yeah. But you see, actually, it's pretty much the same principal reaction. All pass element. Now we can also model this behavior. Next time we finally reach the last standard element, uh, next time we are talking about a PT2 element or delay system second order. We had delay system first order, now second order. What is behind that? Yeah, and how this is looking then, yeah, we will discuss in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.